Welcome. Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithkin. Well, thank you very much, Rob the Robot. Welcome to Inject Creativity Live, a show based on encouraging digital creativity in all curriculum areas and levels with the help of Adobe tools. Welcome, Erin. Thanks, Tim. And a special welcome to all of us, those who have joined us live and those watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or the Australasian Adobe for Education Facebook group for this, the 76th episode of Inject Creativity Live being recorded in August of 2022. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi in the chat, share where you're from and add comments throughout the show. We have Tim Cosgrove from Canada in the background monitoring the chat and he will share the most relevant re well, blah, relevant comments as they come in. <laughs> Let's start this episode with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives and we commit to building a brighter future together. Well, you may have noticed I've got a slightly different background to what I usually have because I'm actually coming to you from the Gadigal land and waterways of the Eora, Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, Darling Harbour, New South Wales, Australia, where the Adobe Sydney office is located. And I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yagara and Agurapul people from around the area, otherwise known as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our techie whiz and Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, to the stage. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. I'm coming to you from the home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, New South Wales. And welcome to Sydney, Tim. <laughs> During this episode, we will have the amazing Kev Lavery joining us. We'll be looking at the primary school's finalist of the recent Regen International Film Competition. We'll be promoting the APAC Adobe Education Summit in September. We'll also be sharing a number of Adobe related education resources and professional learning opportunities for you to take back to your schools, universities and other places of learning. We do hope you enjoy this episode. And if you do, please share it with your colleagues and wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, let's meet our special guest for this episode and welcome back to the show, Kev Lavery. Hey, Kev, for those who have not met you before, tell us about the work you are now doing since leaving us at TAFE Queensland. Yeah, so I uh, moved on from TAFE Queensland um, to a learning and development company called Thinker, where we um, make learning materials, workshops, all that sort of stuff um, for businesses. And, and education as well, but a lot of it's uh, private businesses. Fantastic. And how's it going? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's really good. Um, it's a lot of different challenges than, um, than I had before. Lots of, um, yeah, I'm across many, 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 many different things. <laughs> <laughs> Stretched very thin, but enjoy it. Good. Well, we're glad to have you with us on this show again, Kevin. Tell me, how long have you been using Adobe tools for? Uh, it. It's like 20 years at this point, I think. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I would have been using them uh, at, at uni, some of them. So, um, yeah, we'll be 20, 20 years, 15 years, 10 years, depending on the tool. Some of them uh, just recently, you know, like I only learned how to use Illustrator uh, four, three or four years ago. So, mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. And um, Kev, can you please share with us something interesting about you that not many people would know? Um, yeah, I uh, taught myself how to draw during the pandemic and um, and I make hand-drawn GIFs on Giphy. So you can mm -hmm. find a bunch of hand-drawn GIFs by me on Giphy. Nice. That's good. Hey, Kev, uh, what will you be sharing with us for this episode? 
Um, well, I'm going to be showing you how you can take skills from one of the programs and transfer it over to another. So um, like I was saying, I only just learned to use Illustrator the last couple of years. Um, I learned it backwards through After Effects, but you can actually do it the other way around too and learn After Effects if you've got some Illustrator skills. And After Effects is that, that black box that no one ever wants to wade into, which is a lot easier to use than you would think. Awesome. Thanks, Kev. We're looking forward to hearing from you very soon. Now it's time for a quick Inject Creativity Live Adobe Express tip. All right, Erin, I'm going to get you to share your screen and we're going to have a look at Adobe Express in a feature that's been around for oh, probably about a month now. So it's a relatively new feature. And after you've shown us that, we're going to jump into something that is absolutely brand new a feature that only just came out for educators overnight. No worries at all. So as you can see um, here, oh, I've got a typo in there. This is one I prepared earlier and posted to my socials without realizing that I'd forgotten to change over the episode numbers. Oopsie do. So we have here a little post um, from Adobe um, Express. And in here, I have a little um, post that I've created to go up on social media. And say, for instance, I want to do another post, but very much um, replicate a lot of the elements rather than having to create a whole new project. Um, what we have now is the ability to either add a page down the center bottom of the screen just there or to duplicate a page. So if I want to add a completely new page, I can make it the same as this page or make it some other size and format. Otherwise, I can duplicate what I've already got. And then to review what pages I have available, I can view all of the pages and see my original, my new duplicate, and then any other subsequent pages that I have in there that are available to me. Um, it's really, really nifty as well, because if you go a little bit crazy and duplicate too many, you also have the ability to grab those extras and then just delete them out and then return to the single page view so that you can look at the page that you want. So the navigation's all centered at the bottom um, middle of the screen very very easy to jump backwards and forwards through it's a great feature in fact uh, i used it the other day and created a multi-page pdf because when you go and download it as a pdf mm -hmm. all those pages appear and then it's just a wonderful if oh you're... yeah one of the things i'm really excited about is that it's a nice easy onboarding thing for um, people who uh, might want to get their students um, into doing magazine spreads or using something like InDesign, but they might not have the computers that are capable of running that software at the moment. So this enables them to do those spreads um, within a browser, which is fantastic. Really cool. All right, Erin, I'm going to share my screen now. It's going to look a bit weird when I start sharing, but we'll get used to it in a sec. Here we go. No, not that one. Let's jump into this one. So I'm now in Express now. And I want to show you a brand new feature that just came in literally overnight for teachers. If you're logging in as a K-12 teacher, as a university lecturer, and we've noticed not necessarily at TAFE at this point for some reason, but I'm sure it'll come uh, soon, there's a button now that says resources. In fact, I'm going to bring up my little screen pointer so you know exactly where I am referring to. And that's it just there, resources. Now, if I click on that resources button, as a teacher and as a student, I can see customizable posters for any subject area. If I click view all, we can find all of them. I'm loving these adaptable worksheets for the classroom. And I will go view all this time by clicking view all. It's actually gonna break those worksheets into different subject areas. So instead of having to go and search through a whole range of templates, uh, for any sort of topic, we're now focusing in on education related worksheets. So we've got math and we can view all the math maths worksheets. We've got science, we've got coloring. And I think the people who made this need to go back to school themselves because look at the way they spelt coloring, like seriously. And then we've got writing and we've got uh, all sorts of different areas of education. It's a wonderful resource to stay within. But it gets even better, Erin, if I close down this resource, go back to the main resources section as we're scrolling through, 
for educators, grab and go free lesson plans. Now these are material that we've known about on the Adobe Education Exchange, but now instead of jumping to the Education Exchange separately, you can access it through Adobe Express. And then we've got free professional learning, again from the Adobe Education Exchange, available inside Adobe Express. So do check out the new resources section on the Adobe Education Exchange. What do you think of it, Erin? I think it's brilliant. And it's also worth mentioning, if you are looking for these resources, they are all available through um, edX and that sort of thing. Anywhere you can go searching for them yourself. If you're using a private account, you won't see a resources button. You will see the same little light bulb, but the text will say learn. And it links you through um, there to um, just the very short, quick tutorials for Adobe Express. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Over 1,700 students from about 40 schools around Australia and internationally registered for the recent Regeneration International Student Film Competition. The winning short film for the primary school section was from Spenceley Street Primary in Melbourne titled The Power of Five. Let's have a look at this wonderful short film. Let me see if I can quickly find. I've got so many films in my catalogue here. Here we go. This is this is a really cool film. The Power of Five. With all the doom scrolling and all the bad news going on about flooding, bushfires, tornadoes and earthquakes and all the bad news about climate disasters, it's easy to feel a bit sad, powerless and angry. What am I supposed to do about this? Or this? All this. It's the end of the world. I just feel really, really scared. I feel like I can't really do anything about it. Because I'm just a kid and I'm not the one in power. By the time we're all grown up, it could be too late. So what can you do? Just do something. Don't underestimate the power of five. Step one. Pick something you care about. Make sure it's fun. Turn, Turn it into, into a game. game. Today we were picking up rubbish out of the river because it's bad for the environment. Step two. Bring your friends. If you bring five friends, you change how they behave. If one person influences five, that's awesome. And now you've got 25 people doing something new. And then 25 people become 125 people. And then 125 becomes 625. Then 625 becomes 3,125. And that becomes 15,625. You don't need to change how thousands of people behave. You just need to find five people to make a start. And the power of five will do the rest. Step three. Be patient. Change takes time. People who make a difference are the ones who just keep going. And now we're going to do something. Together, we can stop climate change. Even maybe the first time. Oh, the power of five! The power of five! The power of five! How cool was that? Such I a cool thing. How multidisciplinary it was as well, because <laughs> there was mathematics and civics and environmentalism and you know filmmaking and presentation skills. What an amazing bunch of students. And of course the teachers that helped them make it happen. Well, and the parents too that were involved. And I, I was so impressed. And not only was I able to give them their certificate and award, and I've got a little trophy which is I only just got it yesterday, actually, so that'll be in the mail for you soon, guys. Uh, I actually went to visit the school last Friday and spent the whole day at the school with all the grade four, fives and sixes, and we had an absolute ball. It was a good fun getting them into creating more stuff with Adobe Express and just thanking them for all their creativity. So you can watch this amazing short film again or even share it with your colleagues and your students and find out more about the Regen Festival via timkitchen.net 
If you look up the Regen article in my website, that's how you'll find it. We'll be playing the start of the other winning film from the Camo High School in New Zealand in the next episode of Inject Creativity Live. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Well, Erin, we've got a new look for our newsletter. And a new URL. So if you go to adobeapacedu.com um, and you have a look with us now, we'll just check out this new newsletter's look. I'm going to share my screen again. So just look away for a second while it gets all weird <laughs> on you. There we go. Not that one. There we go. So this is what it looks like at the, the opening of it. And uh, as we scroll down, we can see I've already started building the September 22 and I made the mistake of actually publishing it. So just ignore that part. But here we go, the August 2022 newsletter. And you can see how it's broken into different categories, different tiles. And if there's a story that you like, like, for instance, looking at the Regen Film Festival, you can click on the tile and it takes you to the full story where you can get more information and then always go back. And if you click the um, the blog section at the top right-hand corner, that'll take you to an archive of the newsletter. So this is a wonderful new way of keeping in touch with everything in the world of Adobe. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and encourage you to keep looking at that. If you don't already get this monthly news update, then complete the contact form via, and I think we've got slide 11. Here we go. Contact form is adobe.ly slash contact dash edu dash APAC. This monthly newsletter is a great way to keep in touch with Adobe and the wider education communities. Clara here from the Adobe Education team. I lead our global educator community programs and thank you for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Adobe Creative Educator program, which you can check out below at adobe.ly. The 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit is happening on Wednesday, the 28th of September. If you haven't done so already, please do register at adobe.ly forward slash APAC dash EDU dash summit 22. We have already had over 2,000 views to the summit site. It is going to be a great event. So let's meet some of the presenters. I'm going to be at the APAC 2022 Adobe Summit. I am looking forward to sharing uh, some of the work that I'm doing learning some of the things that you are doing. Clara here from the Adobe Education team. I lead our global education community programs and I'm excited to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Just to get some new ideas, it's great to see the keynote speaker um, and I particularly love picking up um, tips from my peers as well. So always um, time well spent attending the summit. Hi, Ben Falter here and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. It's a great opportunity to work with and learn from an array of colleagues who I admire and respect, but also the presenters who are coming look to be absolutely amazing. I'm Tacey Trowbridge, and I can't wait to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. It's an awesome event filled with educators who want to empower everyone with the use of Adobe tools and technologies. It's a great way of networking with teachers from all over the world and learning more about Adobe tools in the classroom. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Tim Patston and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. And another one of our presenters at the summit this year is the amazing Kev Lavery. Let's welcome Kev to the stage with the topic skill transfer, illustrator to After Effects. Over to you, Kev. Sure. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be having a look at some of the um, some of the stuff we've got. Uh, yeah, there's my screen. <laughs> Just padding for time. Um, some of the stuff that you already know how to do in Illustrator or how it works when you shift it over to another program. So... Um, you'll see that I've got a piece here that that's been made. This is actually from Adobe Stock. I didn't make this. Um, so there's another there's another product tie-in for you, Tim. Um, 
I've separated out into layers though. If you're a um, Illustrator user, utilizing layers as much is probably not something you do. A lot of people use lots of different groups and compound parts within one layer in uh, Illustrator. The one thing to know about if you are going to use Illustrator files in um, After Effects, After Effects uses them more like Photoshop, which likes lots of different layers and can see them as different within there. So I've taken this and I've pulled it apart into the different pieces that I want to animate independently of one another. And After Effects is going to be able to understand all the information that's already in this. After Effects is really good at understanding paths and strokes and fills the same way that Illustrator is. So if you understand those things already, then you're pretty set to shift stuff over from Illustrator to um, After Effects and make some of that stuff that you've made move around. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to add some subtle movement to this um, really, really simply. A lot of people get turned off when they go over to After Effects because there's a lot in the interface that's going on. There's a lot of things to worry about in it. Um, but After Effects overall is super, super basic. What we do mainly in After Effects is worry about five things. There's my hand. Um, you're looking at the position of elements, the rotation of elements, the opacity of elements, um, the anchor point of elements where things change from and the scale of elements. So with this lady we've got on the screen, we can make her head rotate. We can change its position. We can um, change its opacity, how see-through it is. Uh, its anchor point is where those things change from. And a scale is where if it's bigger or smaller. So easy, easy, easy. You see, I've already got one in here. This is actually what I've made with that file already, which is a looping animation, some really, really subtle movement. And we can look at getting some of those things in there now. So we're going to import our file in that we've already created. You see, we've got a lot of menus here, but it's just Command or Control I, like it is in most programs, to import something in. And we're going to get this After Effects, sorry, this Illustrator file. And we want After Effects to read it as a composition. Now, the difference between a composition and footage, <coughs> excuse me, is a composition means that it retains all those layers, which is what we want. Footage means it just thinks of it as one thing. So we want it as a composition. Bringing that in, we can see. Double clicking it, we've got everything in there. Excuse me. And we're going to take these from being Illustrator files into vectors, which is what we like in Illustrator files to begin with. The difference between a vector file and a raster file is that vectors are infinitely scalable. We can make them as big or as small, do whatever we like with them. Um, so we want to actually retain some of that. So what we're going to do is select all of these, control click, and create shapes from vector layer. <coughs> Excuse me. What we've got here is a whole bunch of layers that just you can see strokes and fills if you already understand those. And we've got them all highlighted separately too. All the stuff that we did in Illustrator already, all these Illustrator files are now shine. So they've all taken the eyeball off them. We actually don't need them at all. So we can even delete them out. Because what After Effects has done is made a version of it that's just fills and strokes. If we look in these, we can see in the contents there's a lot going on. Each of these has a path and a stroke. But what these are, if we go and look at them, let's go zoom in on this screen. These are just these hair strokes. Each one is a separate thing. They just move, they're all in one thing because this is how I formed it together. We're going to do a really, really simple bit of animation in this. We're going to take our character here and we're going to move our head. So we're going to do a few different things. The face is going to move. Now at the moment, if we move it, I'm going to open up my properties. Sorry, I did a quick key for that. Um, R is the quick key to open up rotations. Um, but you can also just twirl them all down with these chevrons. We can rotate out. At the moment, 
there's a problem with where she's rotating is her head's not rotating from the right spot. So we'll sort that before we begin anything. So the one thing you use this pan behind tool for is just resetting your anchor points to spots that you want them to be. And once you've set an anchor point in position, that's where all your change occurs from after that. So if a head gets bigger or smaller, it occurs from that point. If the head rotates, it occurs from that point. Even any position shifts act with that place as the anchor for it. So we've got, that's where our head's going to rotate from, which is going to be great. When our head rotates, we want the hair to move with it. So we're going to do a thing that After Effects does really well. Um, the, in something like Illustrator, you would just put them all into the same layer. But we're going to use this thing called parenting. We can either do it here by just selecting it, or we can use this little pick whip and drag it over to it. And what this means is, we'll do it the other way around, sorry. The hair, um, the hair's parent is the face. What that means is if we ever move the face, the hair is going to move with it. That was just the outlines. We need the other hair to move to. Let's make sure we've got all of them, a flowing hair to, parented to. So now any movement that's occurring here is going to carry all those with it. These ones still move independently as well. So we can animate these separately, but at the moment they're all going to move together. So it gives us a lot of breath to move. But let's do a really simple little bit of animation here. This is where our head's going to start. We press the stopwatch to set our first keyframe. Keyframes is how you animate anything in After Effects. We move along the timeline. And then we set that rotation point to where we want it to be next. Now, you could drag it. You could just write in a number that you want. So the four should be OK for us. Well, you'll see it's created a keyframe for us because any change that's separate now in the time frame, in the timeline, is going to be um, a new keyframe. So it's a new frame where change occurs. We're going to set this to um, minus two. So our head's going to rotate back the other way and then eventually get back to zero to make that nice little loop. Head so far moves like this. Now, overall, that's not a great animation, but it brings us to one of the easiest tricks in After Effects, which is a thing called easing, particularly a thing called Easy Ease, which is on your keyboard, the F9 key. And what it does is, and we'll see if we can open up. That doesn't show that well. Um, it's easing into each of these animations. So each of these stops it gradually gets to it. So instead of, if we drag it back, you can see that it's at four degrees already there and then slowly goes back. So if we look at what this animation looks like now, it's a little bit smoother. Now, the only thing we really want to change in this now is probably to move this keyframe past the timeline to make that movement a little bit smoother. But we're otherwise moving ahead. Now, all these other elements we've got in here, we can animate as well. But to start with, that's a really, really easy way to take stuff that you know from Illustrator and, and move it over into After Effects. From here, we could export this out. Um, we could open it in another program. Um, we can send stuff from it. After Effects over to Premiere, um, do whatever we like. But yeah, that's a, a really easy way to get into it, I guess. Kev, that's amazing. And it's it, the way that you explain it makes After Effects sound achievable. <laughs> so many it's so much easier than anyone generated. thinks it is. I found <laughs> Illustrator harder to learn. Yeah, they both uh, have their learning curve. But once you get into it, there's so many similarities between all of the tools. And that's just wonderful. We had a great uh, comment there from Mateus, I think, from the Netherlands, saying it's great to hear your voice again, Kev. So, hi, Mateus. Thanks for joining us live, which is terrific. Hey, uh, Kev, anything else you wanted to quickly share? Because we're just at our 10-minute time now. All good? Um, no, I'm all good, yeah. 
Thanks, mate. Much appreciated. Let's uh, jump into our next stinger because we've got Brian Johnson from the BU who just got something to share with you. Hello, welcome from Adobe's global education team and thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you're looking for more inspiration, learning or resources, come join us at the Adobe Education Exchange at edX.adobe.com. I just said Brian from the BU. That means nothing to anyone unless they work at Adobe. The BU stands for the business unit, which is the people in America. But there you go. You've all learned something now from Adobe. Thank you, Brian. Hey, we currently have about 1,145,000 teachers who have joined the Adobe Education Exchange and 57,000 teachers who have at least enrolled, if not completed, level one of the Adobe Creative Educator Program. If you look up adobe.ly forward slash ACE, you can do the creativity for all course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand to get your ACE level one badge. Alternatively, Dr. Kitchen and I run the Be a Creative Educator course almost on a monthly basis to help guide teachers through level one. Look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator and note that the next opportunity for this course is on October 27 and November 22, starting at 4 p.m., which will be Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time by then. And we'll go straight into promoting Adobe Max now, which is coming up soon. It's Adobe's largest global event. It's where Adobe announces new apps, new features within current apps and celebrates digital creativity to a global audience. This year, Adobe Max is a hybrid event that will be held from October 18 to 20 with about 6,000 face-to-face attendees and hundreds, if not millions, joining us online from all parts of the globe. You can register at max.adobe.com to stay in touch and find out more about the world's biggest and best digital creativity event and join the education stream. Let's jump straight into our Facebook group promotion. If you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. Join us to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education and the wider community. Now, as we said earlier, we have a monthly newsletter called the Adobe in Education Update Australasia. Complete the contact form at adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC if you don't already get this publication each month and join the list. All right, let's get a bit of familiar music happening in the background here. Are you hearing? There we go. We can hear that in the background. Let's bring Ken and Jerry back up to the stage. Bring yourself up there, Joe. There we go. It's lovely to see you back again for our farewell. Kev, any closing words of wisdom from you? No, uh, check out what I'm up to on uh, thinker.me slash events. We've got events coming up this week. But yeah, other than that, just get making stuff. Make it and share it. Fantastic. So thank you so much, Kev. Our next Inject Creativity Live event will feature Adobe Education Leader and Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, Jason Lane. Those who have joined us live, please stay on for the recording of this episode with Jason and then for the fireside chat with our presenters. Thank you to Erin and to Jerry for helping me put this show together. And a special thank you to Adobe Education Leader, Tim Cosgrove, all the way from Canada, who's been monitoring the live online chat. And thank you to those who are with us live. The next opportunity to join us for a recording of Inject Creativity Live will be on Wednesday, the 14th of September at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Special guest presenter Peter Hutton from Future Schools and Mark Christie from the Northern Territory Department of Education. See you at the next episode. See you later, folks. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about dates and topics. And use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative.
Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob, and welcome to Inject Creativity Live, a show based on creativity for all in education with a focus on Adobe tools and resources. Welcome, Erin. Hi, Tim, and welcome to everyone who's joined us live and those watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or the Australasian Adobe and Education Facebook group for this, the 77th episode of Inject Creativity Live being recorded in August of 2022. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi in the chat, share where you're from and add some comments throughout the show. We have the wonderful Tim Cosgrove in Canada in the background monitoring the chat for us and he will share the most relevant comments as they come in. Let's start this episode with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives. And we commit to building a brighter future together. Now, I usually live in the Kulin Nation, otherwise known as Melbourne, Victoria, but I'm actually coming to you today from the Gadigal land and waterways of the Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, Darling Harbour, New South Wales, Australia, where the Adobe Sydney office is located. And I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yugara and Agurapul people from around the area, otherwise known as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our techie whiz and Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, to the stage. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. I'm coming to you from the home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, New South Wales. And welcome to Sydney, Tim. During this episode, we will be hearing from Adobe Education Leader, Jason Lane. We'll be looking at the results of the recent Regen Student Film Competition. We'll be promoting the APAC Adobe Education Summit in September. We'll also be sharing a number of Adobe related education resources and professional learning opportunities for you to take back to your schools, universities and other places of learning. We do hope you enjoy this episode. And if you do, please share it with your colleagues and wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. All right, let's meet our special guest for this episode and welcome back to the show, Adobe Education Leader and Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, Jason Lane. Hello, Jason. Hi, Jason. It's great to have you back to the show. So for those who haven't met you before, please tell us a little bit about where you teach and what you teach. Thanks, Erin. Yes, I'm Jason Lane. I'm situated near Erin in, in Brisbane, Queensland. Um, I teach at Villanova College in Cooparoo in Brisbane, and my main areas are, well, I'm the e-learning director of the school that I teach in, and also I teach across visual art, technologies, and the design curriculum. Okay, Jason, tell us something interesting about yourself that not many people would know about. Well, I, I wish more people knew this, but I, I play music in a band. I play bass and lead and rhythm guitar. So I like to kind of go between the three of them. Um, I, I don't think I'm very good at any one of them. So maybe I should make a choice and just stick to it <laughs> instead of trying to be all things. But yeah, no, I love my music, love playing live and uh, yeah, just love getting out there. Nothing wrong with being a jack of all trades. So uh, <laughs> Jason, speaking of extra trades, what will you be sharing with us in this episode? Okay, well, this is something that I kind of tripped over as part of a Christmas present uh, to my family last year, and it's Photoshop neural filters. And as an educator, I was trying to find a way to uh, bring it into the classroom. And so that's what I'm going to share with you today. Excellent. Well, we're really looking forward to hearing from you very soon. Now it's time for a quick Inject Creativity Live Adobe Express tip. All right, folks, I'm going to share my screen. It's going to look a little bit weird as I do that while I'm in the Sydney office. So just bear with me while I jump into Adobe Express. And in the last episode, we shared the new multi-page way of working with Adobe Express to create a multi-page PDF or a, a multi-page document. 
What uh, I'd like to share with you now is going into the web page side of Adobe Express. So I've just opened up a new project. Yes, I did spy some new little bit buttons that have appeared in there, but I'm not sure how many we have time to share, Tim. Oh, well, we're just going to show you a nice new way of doing a title. Now, traditionally, mm. when you add a title, uh, it, it wants you to get an image and then it sort of dominates that whole first part of your web page. However, mm -hmm. now we have a wonderful little tool down the bottom here is next to photo, which has been there forever. Now yep. we've got short cover. And if we click short cover, we don't need to dominate that whole section. We can just have an image appearing as a relatively small banner at the top mm -hmm. of your page. So I could have my title there. I'll just... Um, wait for that to load I'll, I'll bring in let's bring in something that relates to color oh did i spell color with a u as it should be spelled yeah but that is a good tip if you're searching oh. for photos in an american based site like adobe you might have to swap out the english and the american spelling sometimes that'll take a u or so just to get some different results depending on the tags that are added to that image it kind of does my head in but there you go you can <laughs> see how we've got now a short title now of course the other feature that is there instead of having it as a short um, or as a full covered title, we can do a split layout as an mm. introduction as well, which I must admit I haven't used yet, but it's there. It's now applicable to the start of our web pages in Adobe Express. So there's some pretty cool features for you, Erin. What do you think? It's great. You can do like a little left-right combo. It's really, really good. And um, yeah, it's a, a surprising and welcome change to have the little tools added into the page area of Adobe Express. Now, Jerry, I'll get you to put up slide number 23. There we go. We've got a brand new button also now on Adobe Express for educators and students. And if you're a K-12 or higher ed, you should now be able to see a resources button that takes you directly to a whole lot of education resources, some of which are on the Education Exchange, but you don't need to go to the Education Exchange. They're all built in now into Adobe Express. So it's like a one-stop shop for lots of resources worksheets, all sorts of exciting things. I gave a bit of a demo of it in the last episode if you want to see a bit more about that, but now at least you can see where that link is and have a bit of a play yourself. But Erin, mm -hmm. not everyone has got that resources link, do they? That's correct. We just we do want to point out that where it says resources for education license users, uh, if you have a more standardized license, uh, like one that you pay for, or you're using the free version of Adobe Express, you will see the same icon in the same location, but it is called um, oh my goodness, learn instead of resources. Learn. That's right. And if you click on that button, it takes you to the short, sharp tutorials on how to use Adobe Express. That's a great way to learn more about it. So get involved with either the learn button, but if you're an educator, have a look at the amazing resources on Adobe Express. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Over 1,700 students from about 40 schools around Australia and internationally registered for the recent Regeneration International Short Film Competition. The winning short film for the secondary school section was from Camo High School in New Zealand, and it was titled "The Chain." It was titled "Change Is Now." Let's have a look at this wonderful short film. Earth population eight billion and home for 1.7 million different species of animals, plants, insects, and algae. Look at what we have done. War and conflict. Global warming. Pollution. deforestation, mankind's search for a new beginning has already begun. Why are we looking to the stars for a new home, when we can't even look after the one we have been blessed with? Mother Nature has been fighting back, unsure if we are deserving of a second chance. 
we beg for your forgiveness. We have learned from our mistakes. We have time. We have will. We have each other. Earth, our home, our hope. Our time for change is now. Isn't that wonderful? What an amazing piece. Really, really impressive. And a great use of Premiere Pro Photoshop and a non-Adobe product, Blender, which you don't often see being used by secondary school students, but really impressive to see them doing that. It's worth noting now that we're going to have some special announcements later this year about some of the 3D tools that are available for Adobe. And stay tuned for some very special announcements about that coming up soon. You can watch this film again and find out more about the Regen Festival via timkitchen.net, my website. Mm -hmm. I've just popped the link into the chat for everyone watching the live stream. Make sure you check out the other winners with this of this with the amazing film called The Power of Five by wonderful students from Spencer Street Primary School in Melbourne that we showed in the previous episode. Hi everyone, I'm Tanya Averett from the Global Education Team here at Adobe for Education. I'm so excited that you are watching Inject Creativity Live. Please check us out with the Adobe Creative Educator Program and be on the lookout for all the amazing challenges that we have every month. See you soon. The 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit is happening on Wednesday, the 28th of September. So if you haven't done so already, please do register at adobe.ly forward slash APAC dash edu dash summit 22. We have already had over 2000 views to the Star Summit site. It's actually it's going, going to be a to great be event. A great event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. It is going to be a great event. And um, let's meet some of the presenters. I'm going to be at the APAC 2022 Adobe Summit. I am looking forward to sharing uh, some of the work that I'm doing, learning some of the things that you are doing. Clara here from the Adobe Education Team. I lead our global education community programs and I'm excited to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Just to get some new ideas, it's great to see the keynote speaker um, and I particularly love picking up um, tips from my peers as well. So always um, time well spent attending the summit. Hi, Ben Forter here and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. It's a great opportunity to work with and learn from an array of colleagues who I admire and respect, but also the presenters who are coming look to be absolutely amazing. I'm Tacey Trowbridge, and I can't wait to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. It's an awesome event filled with educators who want to empower everyone with the use of Adobe tools and technologies. It's a great way of networking with teachers from all over the world and learning more about Adobe tools in the classroom. Hi everyone, my name's Dr. Tim Patston and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Well, Adobe have a new resource that maps the Adobe Education Exchange teaching resources to the Australian curriculum called School Project and Lesson Ideas with Adobe. So look up adobe.ly forward slash AC dash projects with an S to make the most of this new resource and share it with your colleagues. Hi, I'm Tacey Trowbridge, Head of Adobe's Thought Leadership and Advocacy. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you're excited about creativity, take a listen to the Creative Educator Podcast. Let's welcome Adobe Education Leader Jason Lane back to the stage to share with us. Over to you, Jason. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Erin. And good uh, afternoon. Good evening, everyone. 
Um, I'm very excited to show uh, something with you that, um, yeah, it, it was quite, a, uh, I suppose, an accident, a, a happy accident that um, I stumbled across, a, 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 across trying to um, come up to, with some interesting Christmas presents, you could say, and it, it just developed from there into a great unit that um, I offer at Villanova with our Year 7 art students. So um, I hope you enjoy what I'm about to present. So I'll just um, share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, so... I'm assuming that we're good to go. And um, I'll get started talking about Photoshop neural filters. So I'm not new to Photoshop and I imagine many of us uh, have been using Photoshop for, for quite some time. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you about is neural filters. And so this here is a, a family photo. I'm a child of the 70s. And back when I was a child, um, there was this thing called pixie photos where you'd go along to a shopping mall and you'd yeah, get a happy snap taken. And on the right-hand side is a photo that um, I dug up um, of me and my uh, sister and, and two brothers. And so the photo, as you can tell from the original scan, is quite, um, you know, washed out. It's uh, really on its last legs. And I tried to use different software and some of the filters that I'd known about in Photoshop for some time um, to resurrect it, to get the colors back and nothing was working. Um, but at the same time, I was aware that neural filters was a, a new feature of the product. And so I thought I'd go there just to see if there was anything um, that I had missed or, or wasn't aware of. And, and lo and behold, that, that's certainly what happened. Um, so as you can see by this single image, and that's me at the front here wearing my uh, happy hippo shirt, um, you can see that I applied a simple colorized filter. And it didn't take me very long just working with the neural filter settings and the sliders to uh, bring some real color and, and um, you know, the image that you're seeing here um, out of that very dated and washed out uh, scanned image that we had in the house. Um, and so then, of course, I was able to uh, print it to a high resolution and, and that was a, the uh, Christmas gift. So that's kind of where this started. It started on a bit of a personal journey, just tinkering at home. Um, trying to yeah create something from an old memory, a happy memory in the family. And um, in doing that, I, I was then challenged as an educator to think, how do I bring this into my practice in school? Um, so oh, this is how we get to the neural filters, but I'll show you that uh, in a moment as well. Um, so this is my school, and this year I'm teaching Year 7 Visual Art, and we have a unit based on urban landscapes where we look at Howard Arkley as a focus artist. Um, and what I'm trying to do as uh, an Adobe education leader and a visual art teacher in, in, in my school is to blend um, technology and traditional art practices together. And so I'm trying to find ways that I can use products like Photoshop um, to encourage students to uh, think more broadly, creatively, um, to also think deeply in some senses about how artists create work and the aesthetics that they use. And that's where, for me, Neural Filters has been um, an interesting journey this year. So this is what I get the students to do. This is a bit of a snapshot of what it ends up looking like. And this is where we work with images from the school, like the one that you just saw. And I get the students to use neural filters to rapidly come up with ideas for artworks and to think about symbolism and, and meaning um, from using this process. So this is an example of student work. And what I've got in each of these slides on the, the left is the before or a similar shot. And uh, on the right is the after. So here is a student uh, creating meaning from a photo and using neural uh, filters in the process. So you can see here how the student is attaching uh, symbolism um, and meaning to the artwork, calling it new beginnings, saying that the green represents a healthy environment, the red shows courage. Um, and so this was quite interesting for me to see that the students could work with the same photo and just by adjusting sliders, they could look at symbolism um, and how they could um, construct meaning in artworks. In the next example, we've got the same thing happening here. Um, again, it, it's the same kind of approach where the students are naming artworks and they're, they're looking at colour symbolism in particular and that, how that relates to their view of the school. And in this last image, this is a really lovely, vibrant image 
uh, again, created through the neural filter process, where the student's looking at the, the rich history and, and the vibrant workspace that, that is our college. Um, so that's some examples of student work. And this is year seven work, and this is why I wanted to show it in my 10 minute uh, spiel here, because um, sometimes we think that Photoshop is out of the reach of students, uh, but I think that depending on what elements of Photoshop you use, that's not the case. And I was able to use Photoshop here as a rapid prototyping process, you could say, to get students to think about um, how they connect to our college just by working over the top of photos and, and applying filters and asking themselves, you know, how does that connect with meaning and symbolism? So these are some examples that I'll run through now. Um, and there's two filters in particular that, that I'll demonstrate, but there's quite a lot uh, in the package, as you'll see, and there's even more coming. And so the ones that I like to use um, is particularly the colour transfer, where you can apply the aesthetics of, of an artist, and you'll see that in a moment, and the style transfer, which is using something more deeply, what I um, liken to the toolkit of another artist. So these are some examples that we're going to go into um, just now. So I'm going to jump out of this and we're going to go into Photoshop. So this is the 2022 uh, version of Photoshop. And here I've got three images um, up on my screen. So I'll just make sure we're right to go here. And if I, sorry, I'll just close out that one. Just a moment, I'm uh, a little stuck in a moment, people. Sorry about this, Tim. I'm just going to open a new version. Jay, nice. Take your time. Yeah, no okay. worries at all. Oh, thanks, God. In your, in your spelling of colour there, Jason. That, that, that oh, <laughs> that's there, been the it? topic of today, hasn't it? That's yeah. not, would you say that it's not your favourite spelling oh. with or without use? I like it. Uh, Nice. Okay, you keep that going. I'm going to restart Photoshop. I apologise for this. I'm using a um, borrowed that's all laptop. Right. No worries. I was actually um, experimenting with neural filters myself the other day, Jason, and I know exactly mm -hmm. what you're talking about with those um, the pixie photos that we used to get in the middle of the malls. Um, yes. That, and that, yeah, sadly, when you um, get older, these beautiful photos that you don't have the prints for, um, the, the negatives or anything you just have those lovely expensive prints that your parents paid money for they do fade and go funny over time especially the ones that were on display in homes that might have gotten a bit of sunlight so this is yes. a fantastic idea especially with father's day coming up this weekend Ooh, um, for students fun. who might have access to be able to restore some family photos as a present Okay, thank you for the for helping me out there, folks. Uh, I'm back in now. So I think I had a, a dialogue window open just while I was tinkering in the background. But I've now got a, a photo open here. So this is just a standard image. Um, and I've downscaled it so that I can just work quite rapidly. Some of these filters do take some time to um, generate. And so just something to be aware of. But anyway, we're in the filter menu and we're going to neural filters. So you can't miss it right at the very top. And when this comes up, here we go. Um, what we've got here is the neural filter being applied over the top. So what I'm going to do is to just jump out of this version and go into um, a new image here. And so I'm gonna go into neural filters. And you can see that in this case here, we've got another filter being applied. And in each case, like these sit on top as layers so that it doesn't destruct your work. It allows you to kind of build up um, these neural filters over time. So I'll get out of that one. And this last one here, I'll actually go back and start from scratch. So let's go into uh, a new image. And when we run the neural filters, on top, we can see here, that the filter has already been applied. If I can just bring up my neural filters window. I'm so sorry, this doesn't normally happen.
Not a problem, Jason. It's always I do apologise. <laughs> the interesting is the Year 7 students, I, I, I was going to video them uh, showing that this process and, and actually getting them to speak um, and narrate it. So um, I'm unsure as to why this isn't working at the moment in, a, in my live demonstration and I apologise for this because, um, yes, we use it all the time and it's a fantastic process and a fantastic um, filter. Okay, so if we go into neural filters. Normally brings up a little... Widget, yes, doesn't it? yeah. it's almost as though I've got a, just a problem with my uh, screen presenting at the, mo at the moment. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's loading now. Oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry about this. It's a, it, the gremlins know yes. you're live, Jace. that's all it is. They do, yeah, I'm sorry about this. Now, first of all, I mentioned a wait list, and so uh, these are the features here that are current um, and, and it worked quite well. Uh, the beta ones are still in development, as you can imagine, but what I like is I'm keeping an eye on these wait list filters as well, ones that are, that are coming soon and we can upvote them, of course. Uh, the ones that I use mainly would be the style transfer and the colour transfer. And as you hover over them, you get these like little uh, windows that give you a bit of an insight into what you might expect when you use the filters. So very quickly, if I go into style transfer as one of my go-tos, this is where uh, I get students to very simply load up and to toggle on the, to the style transfer mode. And by simply going through these um, presets, um, you'll see a bit of a processing dialogue here. You'll see the um, the mechanics, or I suppose the structure of the uh, of the artwork, or the the source image, um, and the color scheme applied to the artwork. And what I like about this is that this is a great discussion that you can have with students, where you can say, "How has this um, artist's work been applied? Where can you see that um, you know some of the the color scheming or the way that they simplify images has been applied?" And so you've got um, Van Gogh, you've got Monet, you've got some great famous artists that are just sitting in this little style, style transfer library. And what you can even do, and this is what I do with Howard Arkley, is we load up our own. So I give students a folder of um, neural filter artworks to experiment with. These are all examples of works that come from our related artist. And you can see how as we load up these style transfers, this might take a little bit longer, because of the detail in the image, you'll start to see uh, the outlining, the, the colour scheming um, come into the work. So that's the style transfer. I'll wait for this to finish. Um, but underneath that, in the beta section, but it still works uh, very well, we use it all the time, is the colour transfer method. And that's the example that I was showing you of student work before. Um, there's some other great ones too, Landscape Mixer. I haven't played with that one yet, but it looks fantastic. Um, and the Smart Portrait modes, there are some other modes that work really well uh, if you're working specifically with photos and it, and it uses the AI to recognise facial features. So we're still waiting for this to come. I hope it gets there in, in a moment. Um, but, yeah, I've been really impressed with neural filters and there's some using them now. Um, to generate ideas, to discuss um, concepts about artworks. And I love the fact that it seems to be a space in Photoshop that is growing. Whoa, that's crazy. That's awesome. Um, and also a, a space where they're looking for user input. I'm, I'm really impressed with that. It's pretty amazing, isn't it, Jason? And these are relatively new filters that were only announced in the last couple of years. At Adobe Max, we announce all our new features and new apps and new new things that are coming into the world of Adobe. And of course, we're gonna be promoting Adobe Max very shortly. Uh, mm -hmm. Was there anything else you wanted to quickly share, Jason? Because we're just about out of time. Um, I guess I would love to show more, but I just, uh, yeah, I'm sorry that there was <laughs> gremlins on my system. Um, <laughs> color transfer, I, I think this is one of the examples where, you know, you can very quickly uh, click mm. buttons and students can see uh, lots of different variations of work. Um, and I just love the fact that students get so engrossed in it. Um, and they keep saving versions of their work and they're saying, I like this and I like this one. So it's yep. a great way for students to develop ideas and develop confidence as artists. I love it. Yeah. It's a great rabbit hole. Thank you so much, Jason. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Well said. Hi Thank there, you. it's Claudio from the Adobe Global EDU team. 
Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't already, join the Adobe Creative Educator Program. Thanks, Claudio. We currently have about 1,145,000 teachers who have joined the Adobe Education Exchange and 57,000 who have at least enrolled, if not completed, level one of the Adobe Creative Educator Program. If you look up adobe.ly forward slash ACE, you can do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand and get your ACE Level 1 badge. Alternatively, Dr. Kitchen and I run the Be a Creative Educator course on almost a monthly basis, and this helps guide teachers through Level 1. So look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator and note that the next opportunities for this course are on October 27 and November 22, and they'll be starting at 4 p.m., which will be daylight savings time by then. Erin, we mentioned Adobe Max just before when we were talking to Jason. Adobe Max is Adobe's largest global event. It is where Adobe announces new apps, as you mentioned, new features within current apps and celebrates digital creativity to a global audience. This year, Adobe Max is a hybrid event that will be held from October 18 to 20 with about 6,000, we've had to reduce it down, to 6,000 face-to-face attendees, and yet hundreds, if not millions, joining us online from all parts of the globe. You can register at max.adobe.com to stay in touch and find out more about the world's biggest and best digital creativity event and join the education stream. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. If you're on Facebook and not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. Join us and keep regularly involved with Adobe in Education and the wider community. We have a monthly newsletter called Adobe in Education Update Australasia. And please do complete the contact form at adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC if you don't already get this public publication each month and join the email list. Let's get a bit of familiar music in the background, see if you recognize that little tune. Let's bring Jason and Jerry back up to the screen for our farewell. Our next Inject Creativity Live event, episode 78, thank you very much, will feature the amazing Peter Hutton from Future Schools. Episode 79 will feature Adobe Education Leader Mark Christie. We'll be recording these episodes on Wednesday the 14th of September at 5pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Join us via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel if you can live. And for those watching live, get ready to move to adobe.ly forward slash edu dash meet dash APAC for our brief fireside chat. And before I say thank you to Erin, Jerry and Tim Cosgrove in the background, Jason, do you have any other words of wisdom for everybody? Uh, just thanks very much um, and really appreciate the comments from Roland and Ben in the chat too. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Go Good neural idea. filters. Stick with them. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. And special thank you to Aaron, to Jerry, and to Tim Cosgrove, all the way from Canada, for helping to put this show together. And here is Rob the Robot to sign off this episode. See you later, folks. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us now via adobe.ly slash edu dash meet dash APAC for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters and other audience members. During this informal chat, you will be able to complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about dates and topics and use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative.